Hey friends, welcome on back to Flower Patch. It has cooled down and it is definitely fall now here at Flower Patch. And I'm gonna take you on the tour of the gardens for the third week of October and what they look like. Next week, we are supposed to freeze, get our first freeze. So it's gonna look dramatically different. I doubt I'm gonna do between now and then a video about our, our garden tour video, but I will next week after the first freeze do a video and show you how everything looks once everything's gotten frozen back, if it does freeze. We're supposed to get down to 33 for the surrounding area, but here in my neighborhood, it is notorious for being colder by three degrees than the rest of the surrounding area. So we can definitely get a frost and the garden will look dramatically different once that happens. So. Let's get rolling on our garden tour for this third week of October and enjoy all the flowers that are in bloom. Well, flower friends, we have had our very first rain. It was a pretty good rain and everything is washed clean. Today, the clouds are clearing off and it's gonna be a gorgeous day though. It started out really chilly and it's gonna stay chilly all day long, but that's okay. We're all good with it. I'm just gonna take a quick look of what's still around in the October garden. I heard a racket out here the other day and I couldn't figure out what it was, but something knocked this down. I think it's the big rock doves. They're little pesky things. They get into the bird seed meant for the smaller birds. It's cool enough now I can get these pansies planted. They're cool wave pansies. You can see how the rain has bowed many things down. I'm just gonna give you a quick or a slow overview of the Rose Cottage Garden. It is in its fall shabbiness, but it's still beautiful. Look at this. That is Bell of Walking Clematis, and I had cut it, cut it back really hard. The drip to it had failed and it was dying and I couldn't figure out why. And then finally I did and fixed it and then trimmed it back and it recovered beautifully. Look at this peace rose. Just doing gorgeous. Out there, my limelight hydrange is bending down. I'm gonna tie that up. It's just too pretty to cut back already. I was hoping with this drying off, it would pop back up. It's still early yet, but I probably will help it. So you see all the pretty things blooming. Last week we were in the low 80s. This week so far, low 60s or 70s, but look. Today it is almost noon and it's only 52 degrees. So, been working out here. I chopped back a bunch of the galardias and then I put the seed pods or the seeds in here. You can see them on the ground. You see the little round thing that's a seed head and you see more over there. Hopefully the galardias will germinate. Come on up. They stayed pretty. They were orange yellow so and they stayed shorter. So that's what I'm gonna, hoping to have grow in here with other things. Um, I do want, still want to get the orange gum frina. The zinnias are doing pretty good. I was cutting back here, the bonariensis, the verbena bonariensis. And um, yeah, looks like it needs some more trimming back. But I don't want it in here. It's too tall for this area, as well as this salvia, which I'll move those to a better spot for them. And I'm gonna try shorter growing things. I also have a beautiful daisy back in the back lane garden that I'm gonna divide and put some in here because I know it'll be gorgeous in here. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Especially with the salvia. Yeah, this pathway, I pruned back the alyssum. I'm letting it go to seed here. 
Um, I'm gonna lay down some new pathway bark. I have the bags behind me, but look what I did here. I had some coffee grounds from the coffee shop and I just packed them in here on top of the cuttings. See, that's the alyssum cuttings. And I just put the coffee grounds on top and that let it all compost into place. And then next year, that'll be all ready to plant. Or I can top it with some of my turkey compost and seed it. I was thinking of seeding um, some of the forget-me-nots along here. I see that they're bowing down now, but the gonfrina has been just gorgeous this fall. So I definitely want to do more. Let me see if I can move slow for you. There's a hummingbird on the feeder. Oh, my hand moved. But looks like I need to refresh that feeder. We have hummingbirds, the Anna's hummingbirds, all winter long, so I keep some feeders out for them. The limelight hydrangeas, aren't those gorgeous? I could cut them and dry them and make a wreath with them, but hopefully they'll pop back up because they were just a showstopper. Something's still blooming in here in my garden during this time. There's a Zinfandel. And, um,. Yeah, I need to straighten my obelisk. And I had that tied up to it a little bit, so I need to tie it up a little bit better. I had thought of trying, trying to go ahead and leave these um, with the heads on and the flower heads during the winter, but we'll see how heavy our snows are because it can break them down and I usually cut them back. But I think they'd be so pretty with snow on them. But ours is just so wet that it really... Uh, can crush them. So yeah, black-eyed Susans. Isn't that beautiful with the water droplets on it? That'd make a great photograph. Photograph to paint. Yeah, the salmon, I didn't think they would make it because they were started so much later and they were underneath all the others, but they sure did. Look at this one. Isn't that one beautiful? I think they're called apricot, not salmon, but isn't that beautiful? The super tunias are still going after I'd given them a hard haircut. My kneeling bench out here got all wet. When I gave my Eden Rose, a haircut. I need to cut back these last two canes or tie them in. Probably I'll cut them a little, back a little bit and then tie them in. And then I took, did a major prune on this side. You see that big, big old stump there I cut because it was compromised. It had splits in the bark. You can see the piece right down there that I took. And it needed to be thinned out anyways and that forces it to put out new canes refreshes it. See, there's a new cane and there's a new cane. And then that's what keeps it rejuvenated and blooming all the way up the canes. So I'm just looking at the garden instead of at my camera. So down in there was some more petunias and you can see some peeking down there. Um, they've gone to seed and I need to cut them back. I will leave them there. I will leave the debris there and maybe they will reseed. Those were the wave, pink wave petunias and they will, um, they do seed, set seed. And um, many times I get new blooms. I cut back this crazy daisy. It is a Shasta daisy. I don't worry about the stems. They, um, they'll be fine. You don't have to go in and prune back every single stem. It's just a waste of time. It will overwinter just fine. Look at these zinnias. So pretty. The salvias too. They have some faded blossoms on them. Can you see that? There's so many things I wanted to get done out here. Look at these, this color right here. I think this is Signora. Um, and I love that color, love, love it. Definitely going to do it again. I could save these seeds and hope to get the same color, but they don't always come true to seed because they will have cross-pollinated with their neighbor. There's 
my reblooming iris. Look at it, so pretty with the water droplets on it. My roses. Still have to transplant that one and move this barrel, but all in good time. I have been in the middle of a lot of projects that were not out here, so I'll get to these. I will. I'm thinking maybe that one yellow one I could plant right in here, that yellow rose. I think it would be pretty. I don't have any roses along this bed, but it used to not get enough sun because of the trees that were taken out. So now that they're gone, I will probably get enough sun here. I could put roses in here too. You can see where I was pulling out the galardias. There's still one right there. I'll just leave that be and it'll overwinter there. I won't cut it back. It'll just compost in place, that one too. I will dig up my Jupiter's beard, my white Jupiter's beard and divide it. I will replace this echinacea with a white swan. And I did plant my new iris down there, Main Street. And I definitely, I'm hoping these will overwinter, um, but I'm definitely gonna do another batch of these. These were the Sahara Mix, um, I, I want to say Echinacea, but it's not, Rubecchia, or Black Eyed Susans. And it just, I really loved those colors. Alrighty, there's those. These Sun Patients, um, yeah, they're okay. they were okay. They really didn't wow me like I wanted them to. They didn't do as well. Could be um, the issue with my potting soil, like I, I mentioned in a previous video. I'm gonna walk down here. You see I pruned back the Eden Rose that I have growing along the fence. All these spots along here will put up little laterals to bloom. So that's pretty. This Clematis, I'm not sure which one it is. I should get down in there and see. Um, it never bloomed this year, but it sure grew. So we'll see what it does next year. But look at that rose. Isn't that beautiful? This is my mystery rose because what I had ordered was not this, but this rose is a trooper. It blooms and blooms and blooms all summer and it has these beautiful colors. So I am not mad. And the company did replace the one I wanted. Okay, so I'm looking down here. Is there anything down here I'm missing? No. Nope. I will mulch heavily with my chicken debris from my chicken pin, as I normally do. I've been cutting back this miniature rose. This hollyhock, after I cut it back, rebloomed. I need to cut back my rosandranium so it's not in the way of the hydrant. My zucchini, that I've only gotten one zucchini off of, I doubt it's gonna stay warm enough to get any more. There's a couple of little baby ones in there I could probably take any. Oh, I didn't notice that this side of my Zinfandel is falling down. So I'll get in here and tie it up. Once it dries out enough, I'd get soaking wet if I went in there right now. More black-eyed Susans. I'd probably have more blooms in there if I had deadheaded. Um, but everything's been let go for probably over a month because of circumstances, but that's how it flies and I'm okay with it. I'm okay with the mess. I just enjoy the flowers. I'm just not focusing on there, I wonder why. Let me try to, there we go. Coreopsis, this Coreopsis always is a stunner that comes back every year. I should gather some of the seeds and space them around. Butterfly bush needs to be cut back. Oh, look at these pink foxgloves. Let me see if I can get underneath here. Can you see it? 
my big beautiful pile of turkey compost. This is from a local turkey organic farm and they compost lots of stuff with their turkey manure. So this, this area right here is just outstanding with the different black-eyed Susans. And I need to deadhead some more in here. I have a hollyhock that's fallen down. I've been meaning to cut that out for a long time. Look at my dahlias. These are Thomas Edison. So I need to get these um, propped up and cut back and what have you. We haven't had a freeze yet. So as long as it stays mild, they will continue to get stronger. The dahlia bulbs, rhizomes, tubers, whatever you want to call them. And so I left them until we get a, a nice freeze. That was a nice dark... Rebecca, yeah. I think next year of letting this just be a bed of Rubeckias. Maybe some daisies, and I could put the salvias in there. Along the front, I have these um, lavenders. But that would be just one mass of Rubeckias there. And uh, the daisies, I think that would be really pretty. And with that touch of blue from the salvia, like the salvias that were over in the artist garden. I can move them over here and have that be just the yellow, blue, and white. I think that would work. And the white hollyhocks could still work there. I know they've put out a lot of seeds. Look at these, my Bosco Bell roses, just doing beautiful. These ones never got planted out, but I'm going to this fall. I am going to get to it. They're gonna go over here in the rose garden somewhere. I do have a um, gopher cage for them. And even if I didn't, I have a, I have a video on how I make gopher cages. I'll link to it. And I can make them any size I want and they work wonderfully. I like it because the hardware cloth I use has a little bit smaller holes. I've noticed that some chicken wire they can get through and nibble. So I am a little more cautious because I've got some really aggressive gophers. So yeah. Everything's fading, but the rain was so refreshing. I need to cut back my peonies. I could let them just flop to the ground, but um, I have things I need to put in and I wanna see where they're going and I don't want them to be smushed or suffocated by the leaves of the surrounding plants. So that's why I do some garden cleanup. Here's a big pile of debris I need to get taken care of. But as you can see, everything's fading away. And that's okay, because when it gets cold, um, I'm in my greenhouse, I'm not out here. And I just let everything go and be. So I've been cleaning up down here. There's my compost. I never did get it um, screened like I was trying to. And so there it sits and it got wet again, but I'll just get buckets of it and take it. I'm gonna put it in my little bespoke greenhouse and I'm gonna plant lettuce in there and see if I can get some lettuce for the fall. I got these tomatoes, they took off finally when it got really hot. And now I don't think they're going to ripen. I could pick those. They look like they're ready to pick and then bring inside for, to get ripe on the counter, but here's my big pile of garden debris that, um, yeah, there's probably a bunch of compost underneath there. I need to get some help to move that, and then underneath it's probably got some beautiful, beautiful dark compost, but look at my roses back here. I'll lean in over. These ones get little to no care and very little water, and yet they do gorgeous, just gorgeous. This is my scepter de Isle over here. Isn't that so pretty? What I love is the center. Let me see if it's... Eh, usually it's very yellow and then it has the little specks in there. Look at that. That is so pretty. With the rain water on them. Yep. That mess right there I need help with. I'm going to hire a young man. He, he does um, yard cleanup. 
and he's a friend of ours, and he is, doesn't have much work right now. It's his slow time, so he can get in here and give me a hand to getting this cop back up. So let's walk back up. I know this messiness is not to everyone's cup of tea, but my garden is not a show garden. My garden is where I go out and relax. I putter, I do what I can, and I enjoy the flowers. And each individual bloom is special. That's my nearly wild rose. Absolutely love that thing. And the gophers have left it alone. That does not have a gopher cage under it. So, let's go around Rose Alley. This right here is my Rose Cottage Garden. I am putting more roses in and taking out some of the other perennials to plant elsewhere so that I'll truly be a showcase for roses. Look at this geranium. It came back from last year by itself. This is a sheltered spot. Normally they won't live over the winter for me. But I wanted to show you, look at that. That is my micro clover. And I have my little mower out here and I was mowing it. They said if you keep mowing it, the leaves are tinier and they get tighter. Now the areas that are not filled in, that's where the, um, co um, not compost, but the mulch was too thick for it to, the seeds to germinate. So I'm gonna get some more seeds. I'm gonna rake that really hard so it gets down to soil and seed that all in. Cause I just, I want a green pathway, like it's grass, but this is very, very drought tolerant. So that's the plan there. And look at these daisies, they had rebloomed. Some beautiful Shasta daisies. The roses, I'm pretty sure, are going to be pretty much done. Because it's just turned, it was very, it was like 40, 40 degrees last night. It wasn't quite freezing. We can get freezing in this um, area during this time of year. So, garden cleanup. Just, I don't always cut back and clean things out of the garden. Many times I'll let things, um, be and like that rosette no that's the tiny monster hardy geranium that'll just be let go unless there's something around it or if I want to put something back there with it then I'll cut it back but other than that I would just let it die back for the winter and whatever was left in the spring would get cleaned up like if there was anything that needed to be moved so my love song rose still had some buds on it. Maybe we'll get enough sun that it can keep going. Now I know there's not a lot to see, but I, I'm keeping a record. And next year I'll see what it look, looks like at this time of year compared. You know, every year is so different. Look at this. This is my golden um, fever fuel. You see how it stays the golden green? And it stays evergreen through the winter, which is quite amazing for here. So I just stepped on an area that felt squishy, like it might be a gopher tunnel under it. So I have to dig it up and see. It's got them pretty much under control. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? I don't know what this rose is. This one was supposed to be a different one in the, um, it's not the one that I had purchased again, but it was replaced, so. This is the one it was supposed to be. You see that one? That is Super Dorothy. And it has those beautiful, bright little blooms and it's a climber, rambler, and it'll climb up this arbor beautifully. And look at these two monsters. This Eden Rose has just taken off. It was supposed to be per, um, pretty in pink, a deeper color, but it ended up being a regular Eden. And then this over here is Albertine, which is a vintage Rambler Rose that blooms really early and it's become a super monster right there. I really loved it. So 
Yeah, we'll see what it does come spring. Oh, look at my poor little primroses bowing over. Look at that pretty one. Primroses do really well for me, and they bloom in spring, and then they bloom again in the fall when it cools down. And I got my dragon fruit sunblaze rose planted right there. So you can see what's going on. More mess, but that's okay. We're in the midst of a cleanup. I got some roses blooming down there along Primrose Cottage. My Japanese maple back there is looking gorgeous. It, we had gotten some a cool down and everything started to change and then it heated back up, so everything kind of stopped. So we didn't get the the vibrancy we normally could get. And the secret cottage garden. It's amazing what's still blooming. Look at these elephant ears. They really took off. I'm having to turn off my camera because I keep sneezing. Must be something in the air. Anyways, I was thrilled with these elephant ears. Now, I am a zone 8B. They're supposed to overwinter in the ground for me, but I've never had them do it. So this year I'm gonna mulch these really heavily and see, we never know. This is a different spot. Maybe it's more protected. Who knows? Um, I do know this gets really wet here because of the runoff from the roof, but I don't know if that affects it. So it's not quite enough sun to get this fountain going fully, but it's trying. Looks like it clouded back up. I thought it was gonna be clear. It looked like the clouds were going away. Those are the bags of coffee grounds. Sorry if I moved too quick there. I was trying to get over to the stepping stone. But I'm using it as a base for the path and then I'll put the bark on top. Let me go back there. That's just that everything's so wet. I'm trying not to get my feet wet. You can see the pathway back there. Oh, I had put that iris in and it looks like I was knocked over. Someone told me that they use um, landscape pins. And yeah, that would work really well for keeping it upright. Maybe it just rains so hard there. Or, you know, I've got critters coming through all the time. I was amazed at these salvias I put in that they tried to bloom. They were just little babies. And look, trying to bloom back here. So, got a lot of weeds that came up when I started watering. So I need to dig those out. I just feed them to the chickens, nice greens for the chickens. And I threw some of the white hollyhock seeds back here and they came up, there's a big fat mushroom. And then this hollyhock, I need to trim it back. I don't want it coming so far forward into the pathway, but that's the primrose behind Primrose Cottage. The castor bean, it doesn't like the coolness. It's starting to go, castor bean plant. Cut that out soon. So, yeah. My little tree rose that I transplanted, doing great. But then I gave it a heavy feeding, so it took off. Now, I wanted flagstones in here with things growing between them, but it seems like I get mostly weeds. But I was thinking of spreading the seeds of the micro clover. But I am supposed to try to get some of that turbo thyme this weekend and see if I can, and that might work. It's supposed to be very heat tolerant, spreads fast, like a couple feet in a year, and easy to divide. See, my dahlias are still doing great. These are David Howard, and they're just beautiful. They're so gorgeous, I love them. I never used to like orange in the garden and then I grew these and suddenly I fell in love with orange. Yep, and they have been just stunners this year, doing so beautifully. One of my seed grown geraniums, I do grow them from seed. Isn't that beautiful? Let me see if I get it to focus better, sharper. Bowing down from the rain.
And this one is that bargain rack one I got at Lowe's last spring. And it was such a pretty purple that I couldn't resist it. And it was like four bucks. So, oh, I planted, see that lettuce down there? I planted a uh, little end off one of those butter lettuce. You know, you buy the live lettuce that still has the roots on it. And I just cut it up and then put the roots back in the ground and just getting, I'm getting another head from it. So, it smells so nice out here. I wish you could smell it. it smells so fresh. And I put some little roses in here. One is the fairy rose, and I can't remember what the other one is. I left the tags in there. So, I gotta be better at tagging things. I haven't been writing them down again. These little asters have been just a delight. I love them because they do stay so short and they don't get too tall. This year, the gophers have left the oriental poppies alone. Last year, they went around and ate all of them. This year, they didn't. You never know what they're gonna eat. One year, they'll leave them alone and next year, they'll chomp them all down. Like my irises, they have never eaten my irises. And this year, they were sucking them down right and left. Look at that. I think that's Kiss of Desire rose and then my iceberg rose. I had thought of just putting this to music, but I don't know. I like talking to you. So I hope you don't mind. Don't mind at all. Salvias are getting pushed over. This Gara has been a delight. I got it off the bargain rack too. I can't remember which when it was, I think I've named it before, but it's just a simple dwarf gara. Look at this, that sexy Rexy. That one was one of those bare root roses that come out in February or whatever at Lowe's and it was like nine bucks. Well, I, th I think I got it for nine. It was 14, but I got it when they were going over and needed salvaging and I did. And it's, the other one um, was planted up but in the rose cottage garden, but it um, died. Oops, I'm getting caught on a rose. Let me, just a second. Ah, there. I think the gophers got to the roots and I didn't catch it in time. So, yep, yeah, lots going on. These, I'm gonna put my strawberries in. I have a friend who, he put like three strawberry plants in each one of the, a pot like this. In fact, I got some of them, these from him. He wanted all black pots and he has gotten some of the most beautiful berries and I think it's because they're right there he has them on his deck rail and he can keep an eye on them and fertilize them pamper them and he keeps getting berries look at this marigold I pulled the other one out because it had spider mites so bad and I fed it to the chickens do you know that marigold flowers there's something in them that uh, makes the egg yolks of your chickens very yellow, very orange. And it's very good for them. My bespoke greenhouse, you can see some of the compost has already been dumped in there. I'm still getting some tomatoes, but you can see how the tomatoes are not liking the cold weather. They are pretty much done. I was just letting them go as far as they would for as long as they would. And yeah, all my rose, roses that I started from cutting, so I've got sitting right here. I wanted them to get some sunshine while it was cooler before I had to um, put them in the greenhouse or sometimes I overwinter them on the back deck. And I could do that too. So, or I could bury the pots in the soil. That would help them to overwinter well. This this stock I got in spring and it has not stopped blooming all summer long. It's usually just a spring bloomer, but for me, it kept blooming. And my little sempervivums there with the leaf and some acorns that have fallen in there. Yeah, my wall here, we're gonna fix it soon. We've got the tree stakes to put in there. Lost the water falling out of the trees. I thought, oh no, it's starting to rain again. Sure looks like it could, huh? Look at the sky up there. So 
So part of my plan today was to clean out Primrose Cottage keep, and not do it all in one day. It's just too much of a disaster to do in one day. But, yep, I'm going to utilize that space better. It's been a catch-all. So here is the overview, which I always try to do, of the Secret Cottage Garden each month or each week. And where it's at right now. Um, that's my little mower there. It's just a little push mower. And it did a good job. And I stupidly, <laughs> foolishly, left it out. Forgot about it out here. And it got rained on. So I need to give it a good spritz down with some WD-40. So nothing rusts. So... Yep, also the, the view of Rose Cottage Garden through the Rose Alley, which next spring I'm hoping will be just even more filled with roses than it was this year. So that, my friends, is the garden tour for this third week of October. And in fact, yeah, this is the beginning of the third week, so it's just been an amazing, amazing summer, and I have loved it all. I have some changes in mind for areas. I am aiming for more lower maintenance. Not that I had much maintenance, really. I hope you enjoyed this video, and what's going on in the garden? It's looking a little shabby, but it's that time of year, and that's okay, because I've got things going on. I've got to get my studio cleaned out, Primrose Cottage, and get going on some painting things. And I have a lot of ideas. And it's funny because when your creative mind gets going, it's like you've got a ton of things that you would like to do. And so anyways, today I'm baking bread and I have to get back to it. All right. I'll see you in the next video.